A breakthrough in Advani's Ratyatra bomb case. Cops arrest two locals in Madurai. The CBI tells the Supreme Court that it did not oppose the bail pleas of Kanimuri and four others on gender, age and health grounds. Jailalata moves the Supreme Court for permission to file written responses instead of personal appearance for the remaining questions in the Bangalore court on the 8th. Bail's group of institution chairman Isari Ganesh arrested on charge of assault of a Pachepa College trustee. The CMDA and Chennai Corporation to continue the lock and seal exercise. Notice given to 12 more buildings in Tinagar. Med Department predicts bountiful rainfall in Tamil Nadu for the next 24 hours. Jailalata assigns 13 ministers to survey affected districts. And Hollywood stacks up numbers to pay their last respect to music maestro Ilai Raja's wife. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to News Tonight. I'm Anu George Kanjanath Open. Let's take a look at what's happening across the country. NDTV accesses Pranab Mukherjee's detailed rebuttal on the controversial 2G note tells the PM that the Cabinet Secretary had added the line on Chidambara's road. Anna Hazare writes to Prime Minister and threatens to go on fast if there's no local bill in Parliament's later session. Oil companies pitch for petrol price hike for four times this year. HPCL says the price hike of about 2 rupees is necessary. The 93-day-old economic blockade of Manipa's main national highway was lifted at midnight. A top story, two people have been arrested for planting a pipe bomb on Advani's route during his Rath Yatra in Madurai. The two accused, Abdul Rahman and Ismat, are both from Madurai. The cops have also seized an auto and a two-wheeler. One of the accused runs a fruit shop in Madurai and Advani was their target. The police are probing their background. Our crime correspondent Salim joins us for more on this. Salim, if you could tell us, how did the police narrow down on these two culprits? Uh, sources say the mobile phone call details helped the police to crack the case. Special investigation team of the CBCID closely studied the scene of crime and the closest cell phone tower. Uh, calls that were made from the location where the pipe bomb had been planted were closely reviewed. Then police zeroed in on two suspects uh, based on the conversation and took them under their custody. Further investigations are on. That was extremely informative, Salim. Thank you. Moving on to our top story. A day after Supreme Court asked CBI to clarify its stand on the bail petitions filed by people accused in the 2G spectrum scam, the CBI today told the court that it did give concessions to Kanimuri and four others by not opposing their bail pleas in the 2G case. The public prosecutor did not oppose the bail pleas and left it to the trial court to decide, says the CBI. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J.J. Lalita has moved Supreme Court against the Bengaluru Trial Court order, directing her to appear on the 8th of November in the disproportionate assets case. In her petition, J. Lalita says that the trial court is violating the Supreme Court order. She says that the Apex Court had directed her to appear before the trial court on the 20th and 21st, but the trial court directed her to appear on the number 8th to complete the questioning. Her petition says that she enjoys Z plus security category and her appearance before trial court caused great inconvenience to the public in Bengaluru and she had already answered 567 questions out of the 1,339 and requested if she would be allowed to answer the rest by a written statement instead of appearing on the 8th of November. The Chief Minister is facing trial in 66 crore disproportionate assets case. She had been accused of accumulating wealth during her tenure in 1991 to 1996 as a Chief Minister. Well-known educationist Isari Ganesh was arrested this morning by the Chennai police. The cops say that the action against Ganesh, who runs the Wales Group of Institution, was based on a complaint that he had assaulted a member of the Pache Pass Trust during a board meeting. A crime correspondent Salim reports. A dramatic turn of events for this man, the brain behind the Wales Group of Educational Institutions in Chennai. Aisuri Ganesh has been sent to the Pural Prison on six charges 
which according to police sources range from criminal intimidation to assault. The police say they acted on a complaint filed by Shiva Subramanian, one of the trustees of the Pachayapas Trust Board. The complainant alleged that he participated in a meeting convened by the trustees of Pachayapas Board on Monday and that he was assaulted by Aisri Ganesh following a verbal argument, a charge denied by Ganesh's lawyers. Today, Mr. Aisri Ganesh, who is the Chancellor of Wells University, arrested by the police for the previous grievous uh, vengeance, fabricated complaint. Fabric, for the fabricated complaint. We're expecting uh, as soon as we'll get the bail for him. Ganesh had started his political career as a student leader of the AIA DMK, but switched his loyalties to the DMK. Over the years, he set up a chain of elite schools and colleges. Ganesh's bail petition is posted for hearing at the Sessions Court on Wednesday. In Chennai with Salim, this is Krishnamurti for NDTV Hindu. Meanwhile, heavy rains continue to lash many parts of the state, including Chennai, as the northeast monsoon remains active over the state today. Morning office goers faced much difficulty as overnight rains continued in the morning in many places, with low-lying areas remaining undeaded. The regional Met Office has forecast further heavy rainfall in Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry for the next 48 hours. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Jay Lalitha has assigned 13 MLAs to visit the rain-affected districts. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J.J. Lalitha today directed release of water from two dams in the state that will benefit irrigation of over 34,000 acres in three districts of the state. Following requests made by farmers, the Chief Minister ordered release of water from Manjular Dam in Thani for the irrigation of around 5,259 acres at Thani and Dindikal districts. Further, water will also be released from Amaravati Dam in the report for irrigation purposes, covering over 29,387 acres in Tirupur and Karur districts. The release said adding water from two dams would be released from the 2nd of November. Next time you enter a petrol station, be alert so that you are not duped. The Consumer Association of India has offered tips on how not to get cheated at the petrol pumps. They said, wherever possible, patronize company-owned and company-operated pumps that are manned by the oil company officials themselves and always ensure that before the fueling process is started, the pump board display reading is set at zero. You can also lodge a complaint if you feel you have been shortchanged. The phone numbers and the office addresses are prominently displayed at the station and the complaints are quickly attended to. To find out the correct delivery of petrol and diesel in petrol pumps, the assistant controllers of legal metallurgy will make a bi-month inspection. Bi-month inspection means uh, once in two months. For that purpose, each and every assistant controller of legal metallurgy will have one pilot test conical measure. That test conical measure will be tallied and calibrated with the working standard capacity measures. The International Justice Mission launched a grassroots campaign against bonded labor to help vulnerable communities understand the impact of bonded labor through street theater. The NGO will organize the campaign traveling through 50 villages in six districts across Tamil Nadu. International Justice Mission has worked closely with the government and rescued and rehabilitated over 3,700 bonded labourers so far. In attendance as chief guest was Mr. Jeev Ratnam, who is the secretary to the government of Tamil Nadu, Adi Dravidar and Tribal Welfare Community and Mr. Ravindran, director of Tribal Welfare. Today, the NGO launched its campaign at the Marina Beach in Chennai. So this campaign mainly is targeting the people of, from the vulnerable communities where the message about awareness is taken to their doorsteps and it's delivered at their villages. So we have selected 50 villages randomly across five districts uh, surrounding Chennai, uh, Kanchipuram, Tiruvallur, Vellur, Vilupuram, Tiruvannamalai. These are the districts in which uh, this campaign street theatre performance is, will be performed at the community halls and in their villages and the discussion will be facilitated. So in the, each of the villages the local NGO personnel will be introduced to the people whereas they can take the bonded labour complaints to them and the government will be notified this problem of bonded labour so that people can taste freedom in their lifetime. We have inaugurated uh, 
the awareness campaign on bonded labor, abolition of bonded labor. Uh, the IJM, uh, the International Justice Mission, is an NGO. They are doing excellent work. Uh, they have initiated the um, campaign work today. Uh, the this awareness campaign was uh, organized by IJM. Uh, everybody liked it. And uh, it uh, starts from today. In six districts, they are going to organize this uh, awareness campaign. <laughs> Cars and bikes go up in flames in Kotor Puram. We'll tell you what led to the scene when we return on the other side of the break.